Welcome back. Thought I'd make a quick video on chargers that I would recommend. I've used quite a few over the last couple of years, so this is designed to be a sort of quick start guide, just outlining some of the chargers that I've used and what I would personally recommend for different types of batteries. We'll start things off with basic lithium ion chargers. I would probably go with the XSTAR MC series. These come in different sizes. You've got single, double, quad and there is even a six slot version around and I think these chargers offer good value for money decent charging there's not really many disadvantages other than the fact that they just charge lithium ion batteries you can't charge any other types of cell with them a multi-format single slot something a bit more advanced the Claris K1 I use this quite a lot it's a very handy charger it's a bit bigger than the MC ones, but it does accept quite a large variety of batteries up to C cells and the two 6650s. And it can also charge three different voltages of lithium as well as nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium. And you can manually charge, change the charging speed on that. So very useful little charger. There's also a K2 if you need a double slot charger. Now for a dual slot more advanced, I go with the Nightcore F2. Couple of reasons for this. Personally, I am a big fan of the power bank function. I use that quite a lot. Also means you can swap out the batteries later on so you're not stuck with the cells when they're worn out like with um, a normal power bank. So that is a very useful feature. You've got the voltage check and it also has a good charging speed of one amp per bay. The only downside with this is it doesn't charge nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium, but it's a nice little charger for the power bank and for solar charging. Now the budget four bay charger, I would go with the NL4. I looked at this recently, very good price on it. And there aren't that many chargers out there that will charge the nine volt batteries. So this is definitely a charger to get if you're a big user of AAs, triple A's, and occasionally use the nine volts as well. I found it a very good little charger and it's a very low cost too. It's a very minimal cost on this and it does a decent job on charging. Next up for the ultra compact, I would go with the Olight Universal Magnetic USB charger. Very interesting design on this. Initially thought it might be a bit gimmicky, but it turned out to be quite a good little charger. You have no need to adjust the polarity on this. You just attach it to the batteries and it starts charging away. It works with nickel metal hydride and 3.6, 3.7 volt lithium. There are a couple of disadvantages. It's not particularly quick for nickel metal hydride cells, but it is a nice super portable little charger that you can put in a backpack or even a pocket and it takes up virtually no space at all. It's also be able to charge much longer cells such as the 21700s. So that's a nice advantage to the design. Now for the four by LCD, the obvious choices here are the Nightcore D4 and VC4. Both of these chargers are very popular for obvious reasons. It gives you much more information on the display. So I will start with the D4. Which one to go with depends on really what you're going to charge with these chargers. And the D4 is a solid charger. You have a choice of charging speeds. So you can charge small lithium ion cells with it. It's also a good charger for nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmiums, but there are some disadvantages. The unprotected 20 and 21700 cells won't fit in this charger. Charging speeds aren't particularly quick if you're using more than two bays. So that is something to bear in mind with the D4. It's still a very popular charger because for a lot of people it will charge uh, 18650s very well and you can also adjust down the current and also do lithium iron phosphate charging which you can't do on quite a lot of the chargers out there so it's still worth considering. Moving on to the XTAR VC4, it's another popular charger. This one uses the barrel style connector rather than mains powered compared to the D4. It's a bit bigger, but that comes with a couple of advantages. You can fit up to three of the 26650 batteries in this. So it's definitely a better choice if you're going to be charging larger lithium ion cells. Also does a nice job of charging nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, and it will fit the 20 and 21700 lithium cells. Also has slightly longer battery activation, which I found to work a bit better, and it's faster than the D4. So which one to go for on this? Really, honestly, they are both good chargers and decent choices. Some people will prefer a mains charger. The VC4 is USB. You don't get the power supply with it, uh, but you do get a useful display which shows you how much you have charged into the cell which you don't get on the D4 so I would suggest if you charge lots of uh, higher capacity cells the VC4 be the best choice for you or if you're traveling 
If you tend to charge a lot of smaller lithium ion cells and you need the lithium ion phosphate charging or you want a mains power charger, then the D4 might work better for you. But you can't really make a bad choice with this. Now onto the fast charger. Uh, Mi Boxer C2 6000. I looked at a few of the Mi Boxer versions and the... Um, this one was by far the best one I felt. It doesn't have quite the full testing abilities of some of the other models, but it's very easy to use. It has a wide range of charging speeds and can charge up to three amps. It can also fit D cells and two 6650s. And the automatic charging worked really well on this, but you can manually go in there and change the settings yourself. It's definitely the best one that Mi Boxer have done, much better than the C4, which wasn't a particularly good charger. Now, if you're looking for a lots of slot charger, as I call it, the Nightcore IA, I found it to be a decent charger myself. I've used it quite a lot. You have mains powered, dual USB ports, but the main features with this charger is it automatically selects the charging current. So it's pretty much fire and forget. You just insert the batteries and away it goes. So it will know if it's charging lithium ion or nickel metal hydride cells. There's no real disadvantages other than the fact that you only have the single LED. So you don't really know the charge state other than the fact that it's finished charging. So this is a charger to load up and disappear. It's a decent if you need those extra slots, but I would have liked if they'd have crammed uh, nine volt bay on there so you could charge those just to round it off as an all-in-one the budget analyzer and tester opus bt c3100 this is a really popular charger i've had a lot of questions on this and i get a lot of views on the video the reason is that it offers excellent value and discharge capacity testing as well as the internal resistance so it's a charger which a lot of people are going to find very useful particularly if you have a lot of batteries there are a couple of downsides and those would be mainly that you um, contact points aren't quite as high as they could be so it could be a little bit an issue with flat top cells and also um, it does make a slight noise with the fan although i don't find it too much myself it's a pretty quick charger and it does offer a lot of functionality though at a really good price so if you're on a budget and you want a tester that really is the one to go for is the opus and that's backed up by a lot of people who have used it and are quite happy with this unit as with everything there can always be some improvements now for the premium tester i'm using the xstar dragon vp4 plus it isn't a perfect charger but it offers a couple of features for me which are extremely useful and that is the internal memory that's built in so remember test results so if you ever have a power cut or something like that and you or you forget you take batteries out and i do test batteries on the channel so that is a very useful feature for me and it also takes up to the larger d cells the 32650s as well as a comprehensive bundle including a carry case so this is really an all-in-one it's not perfect i would like to have some individual control over the charging on the channels whereas this just sets the charging speed for all of them um, but it is completely silent that's another factor if i'm recording videos or something it doesn't make any noise at all and i could be testing away with the batteries you've also got the internal resistance testing and it's a fast charge you can charge uh, two bays at two amps or a single amp across the four bays so it's uh it is expensive as a charger goes but if you do a lot of testing it could be something which is quite useful someone has got a lot of batteries you need to weed out the poor batteries and it does have the activation function which the opus charger lacks but these will both be good chargers in their price points that wraps up my video on the recommended chargers that I've used. But if you have used any chargers yourself and you think that they might be of interest to other viewers, there are new models coming out all the time, then do drop a comment below because it might help somebody else if they were looking for a specific model because I haven't used all of the ones that are out there. There are still quite a few that I haven't looked at. I've covered most of the uh, more popular models. And also do have a look through some of my other videos where I've tested batteries and done more in-depth reviews on these chargers. So you can go in there, have a look at the pros and cons of whether or not they're going to suit your particular needs. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.